Our sermon text this morning is from the New Testament, the letter to the Hebrews. I'll be reading from chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. Hear now the word of God for our Lord. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in a land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered himself faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. This morning marks the beginning of a four-part sermon series on faith. Today and for the next three Sundays, the lectionary scripture passages are from a letter to the Hebrews, a sermon manuscript in its own right, addressed to an early Christian community in the year 63 of our common era. The author is unknown, but may well have been the early church leader Priscilla, later mentioned by Luke in the book of Acts making this book, if authored by a woman, unique. The audience for this letter would have been a group of Christians subject to persecution for its belief in the risen Christ, and probably also disheartened and discouraged, having waited for the promised any day now return of Jesus, and yet he still had not come. These early Christians may have begun to doubt whether Jesus really could be the Messiah at all. And the letter to the Hebrews is an exhortation to a doubting people and argues for patience. It encourages the community to rekindle its faith in Jesus Christ and to understand him in broader terms, including serving as a model of facing the difficult challenge of living out the life of faith in a hostile world. Not so different from Christians today. Let's begin with prayer. Gracious God, open our hearts and minds to your word this morning that we might learn to trust in you like the faithful ones who walked the Christian journey ahead of us. Let us always listen for your call 
and thrive in faithfully following. Amen. When you have lost your way in the wilderness, find your faith and keep on moving. When you have lost your way in the wilderness, find your faith and keep on moving. Do you know anyone who has found his or her faith recently? Or came back to it after a long wander elsewhere? We usually find it when we've been knocked to our knees by something awful. Being knocked to your knees is a posture that happens to be a prayer position, as someone helpfully pointed out to me this week. Many of us have been struggling with health concerns, painful family issues, loss, fear, awaiting biopsy reports, starting chemotherapy, enduring endless painful water tank treatments in the burn unit, or a private pain that we have not shared. We need our faith to survive these disasters. Faith shores us up when we're down, when we are lost, when we feel like we are drowning. For those of us who remember our faith, it's like seizing upon a life ring, a flotation buoy. Faith saves us, preserves us, and gets us back on our feet again for another day. When you have lost your way in the wilderness, find your faith and keep on moving. That is what the letter to the Hebrews is all about. Survival from doubt, from fatigue, and from persecution by the renewal of faith. More than mere survival, but joyful flourishing in the life of Christ. The early Christian patriarchs who assembled the books of the Bible thought that this letter was written to a community of Christian Jews because of all the Old Testament references and reminders in it. As a letter of exhortation, it harkens back to the example of the Old Testament faithful. The Gospel stories, the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, were still being shared orally as eyewitness accounts and had not yet been written down. But remember that the letters written to the early churches, including the letter to the Hebrews, which are all filed at the very back of our Bible, are in fact the earliest writings of Christian witness to the life and death of Christ and the mystery of his resurrection. These early accounts were written to fledgling Christian communities, so even though the letter to the Hebrews is at the back of the Bible, it was actually written before the Gospels were, and loss of faith was already an issue early on. Maybe that's what inspired Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to get started with their writing. Sometimes it's not clear where we are headed. But one thing is for sure, the place we wander through, the wilderness we're lost in, the dark place of doubt, is not a place to settle down in. You don't want to stay in the wilderness forever. So try not to linger. Being lost is a temporary state of affairs. A sudden illness, a job lost, a death of someone whom we love and depended upon. These challenges often bring on the feeling of being lost in the wilderness, even when we think we have a good handle on life. 
other times our disorientation is expected. When we try something new and challenging but find ourselves quickly in over our heads, maybe our wilderness comes with being a new parent or a newly wed. For some, it's starting a new school or college in a new place, a strange town. Maybe the language is not your own. Maybe you don't know a soul. Or maybe you've left school and want to start life as an independent adult, and yet you find yourself back living at home with your parents and no job in sight. Or maybe you're starting a new job. Or still have the old job, but with a new boss, or with a new budget cut. Or maybe our new business venture failed, or the stock market tanked with all our savings sunk in it. Our plans ruined, or our future now dim. Now what? What happens if there's an accident? Can we even afford to be sick? Who will take care of the kids? How will we feed them? It's the wilderness all over again. We've all been there. And most of us have come out the other side. We've emerged to find a more stable place, a better feeling, a stronger friendship, a new calling, a different job, a healthier outlook, a comfort level in new situations that we never had before, a confidence that everything will be all right, the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things unseen, because life already got better because God keeps God's promises, and we know that, we trust that, we have to, and we do. Or maybe you're not so sure. What then is faith, and how do you find it? Because it sure would have to be helpful to have some faith about now. It sure would help. When you have lost your way in the wilderness, find your faith and keep on moving. I first heard these words in a sermon by Craig Barnes, now president of Princeton Seminary and one of my preaching heroes. When I heard his message, I already had lots of experience with the metaphorical wilderness of life, an extensive knowledge about being lost in it. But there was only one problem with what he said. Everything seemed to rest on finding your faith in order to move on. He never explained what finding your faith meant, as if I was supposed to know. Yet I wasn't sure. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus? Faith in my own best judgment? Faith in my GPS system? Faith in Christianity as an organized religion? When you've lost your way in the wilderness, find your faith and keep on moving. He never explained the most important part. Faith. What is faith? I puzzled over that for months. It was only when I read this morning's scripture passage from Hebrews that I began to get some reliable answers. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things unseen. So I recast the preacher's wilderness advice this way. When you've lost your way in the wilderness, find your assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things unseen and keep on moving. It's a bit clumsy, but a little more concrete. As I read more from the letter to the Hebrews, I began to understand why faith the assurance of things hoped for was so central to our moving out of the wilderness.
list those lost places of our lives. And I recognized how we as Christians have something that Abraham and Sarah of the Old Testament did not. The gift of Jesus to guide our way. Faith is not about magic or superstition or just plain wishful thinking. But faith does require some believing. Believing in God's plan for each one of us. Believing in a God that keeps God, God's promises and always has. Believing that the promises of justice, peace, and mercy on this earth will be and have been realized in the really did happen life of Jesus and the mystery of his resurrection. Believing in Christ's presence among us today through the power of the Holy Spirit, we believe these things as Christians. But what if you don't? What then is faith about, really? What are you missing? What can you pull from that arsenal of human experience to carry you through the wilderness even if you are still not sure about Jesus? What is the essential ingredient that gives all of us who do put our faith in Jesus as Christ the assurance and the conviction that the wilderness experience of being strangers in a strange land is a temporary state of affairs? What is finding faith in Christ? One thing. It's called confidence. Confidence. Pure, unadulterated, bold, brash confidence. Confidence in the conviction that what you feel firsthand with that first glimmer of light piercing through the darkest, most desperate days of your life. When your wounded heart and ruptured soul and broken body finally stop bleeding long enough for you to begin to heal. When your inner confusion begins to resolve into direction. When you realize at long last that you really are a purposeful and precious creation of God. What you feel is nothing less than the love of Christ washing you clean and keeping you afloat. Like the great waves crashing over a lifeboat, mercifully cleansing waves that become the calm water that holds us up invisibly from underneath. When you are confident in your belief in Christ's presence, you can face down anything that comes your way. Even whatever it is that scares you most, you can whistle in the dark, you can feel your way ahead, you've got faith, and that's all you need to lift your foot up out of that murky swamp and onto dry land once again. Christian faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen but already present in our lives. Christian faith is the confidence that God has a purposeful plan for each one of us. Christian faith is the first-hand experience that the Holy Spirit is at work within us and among us here and now. Faith is hope for a better country, yes, but grounded in confidence, conviction, and assurance that God is leading us there one day at a time. Lost in the wilderness, find your faith, have confidence in God's plan, place your hope in Jesus Christ, put your trust in the power of the Holy Spirit and plow ahead with courage. You'll make it through with Christ to guide you. Faith is enough. And faith
fact, it's all you'll ever need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 